Now at 10, all the rain is on the way. I've got all the details coming up. Plus, a new law looks to improve health outcomes for Mississippi mothers and babies as the state grapples with the nation's highest infant mortality rate, how doctors are responding, and what they say needs to happen next ahead. And later, riding to pay respects, hell fighters from across the nation gather in Jones County to honor the life and legacy of their national president. Your News at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Good evening and welcome in. I'm Trey Howard. It was a beautiful day in the Pine Belt after yesterday's downpours, but the radar shows more rain is on the way. So we're starting with our News at 10 with an update on the forecast. Nick, when do these showers move in? Well, they're certainly to our west, so if we take a look here at the South Central Regional Medical Center, you notice that we're dry for now, but that's going to change in the near future. And even that temperature there, we're in the 60s as we speak, but colder temperatures are on the way after the rain. So just keep that in mind that yes, we're dry, but it's not going to last. Similar story there at Forest General Hospital, slightly colder there at 62, but other than that, we've got a nice slight breeze out of the south, maybe west-southwest there at around three to five miles an hour, but just enough to rustle a few leaves, but not enough to really be a concern or a bother. But there you go. We're tracking those storms off to our west, uh, coming out of Yarkla, Texas and Red River Valley there, bordering Oklahoma and Texas, moving across the Louisiana Arkansas border and towards our area. This will be our next weather maker coming up tomorrow. So as always, stick for the latest, not only with me, but also for the app to see the latest on what to expect with the rain. Trey? All right, thanks, Nick. Developing tonight, two people are behind bars and several pounds of meth are off the streets following a multi-week investigation in Perry County. The Perry County Sheriff's Department tells us deputies exposed a large-scale drug trafficking organization, this with the help of Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics, the FBI, and the U.S. Postal Service. Investigators spent about three weeks of surve surveillance gathering descriptions of several people involved in the operation. And when officers tried to stop a black Honda Accord in connection with the investigation, of officials say people in the car threw packages from the window. PCSD later reported those packages contained meth. In total, investigators recovered about four pounds of the drug. The two people in the vehicle, Frankie Tatum and Calandria Lawrence, were arrested and charged with aggravated trafficking of a Schedule II controlled substance and tampering with physical evidence. As of right now, neither of them are on the Perry County Jail docket. Tomorrow, flags will fly at half staff across Mississippi as the state mourns Chief Warrant Officers Derek Abbott and Brian Zimmick. You'll remember the two National Guardsmen died last month in a helicopter crash in Prentice County during a routine training flight. Governor Tate Reeves signed Executive Order 1580 into effect this week, proclaiming Sunday and Wednesday as days of mourning and directing flags to be flown at half staff from sunrise to sunset. Tomorrow will honor Officer Abbott and Wednesday will honor Officer Zimmick. A new bill passing through the legislature will allow earlier Medicaid coverage for pregnant women. Governor Tate Reeves signed the Presumptive Eligibility Legislation, or House Bill 539, into law on Tuesday. Lawmakers hope it will improve the health outcomes for babies and mothers as they will be able to receive early prenatal care. And here's how. The legislation says Medicaid will pay for a pregnant woman's outpatient medical care for up to 60 days while her application for Medicaid is being considered. For reference, a regular Medicaid application takes 45 days to process. House Medicaid Committee Chairwoman Missy McGee said the cost of the program will be just under $600,000 a year. One Mississippi obstetrician is happy to see lawmakers listen to experts on this, and she hopes this is the first step towards fixing more medical issues in the state. I'm glad that our state is focusing on this. I hope we continue to do that. The problem isn't solved, but there is increasing the awareness, increasing the advocacy. It's really about our families here in Mississippi, and we, we don't want to have that statistic forever where we have the highest rate of infant death, highest rate of preterm birth. This is something we should be really focused on solving. This comes after the state extended postpartum Medicaid coverage from two months to a full year in 2023. Now for this legislation, it will officially become law on July 1st, later this year. Today, members of Hellfighters USA came from all over the nation to ride in honor of National President Mike Grubb. Grubb passed away on February 12th of natural causes. R.J. Harrison tells us more about who Grubb was and how he used Hellfighters to support those in need. You may have heard these motorcycles as dozens of hellfighters made their way to Angel Lake. 
the ride in honor of one of their own. He was a sinner saved by grace. Riders came out to the lake to celebrate the life of Mike Grubb, the group's national president. Grubb passed away back in February. His widow, Lisa Grubb, says she still remembers the day he decided to get involved. He would collect people up that were interested in participating and starting a unit, and he would go out to different different places and uh, he would make sure it was safe for them to ride their motorcycles with their, their patches on. Riders from over 15 states came down to Laurel to see Grove's final send off. His family grateful for the support. We're blessed and um, he's touched every one of their hearts and uh, planted seeds and been watering them and harvesting for Jesus. The turnout also a sign that the Hellfighters mission is still going strong. You don't have to be here but just a second and you just feel the love that we feel for one another and, and that's what we're all about is just sharing the love of Christ. In Laurel, I'm Jay Harrison, WDAM7, on your side. And a celebration of life service was also held for Grubb at the Highland Baptist Church Sanctuary in Laurel. A Hattiesburg Moose Lodge has reached out to honor first responders and help children. The Moose Riders at Moose Lodge number 1804 hosted this luncheon for law enforcement officers, firefighters, and EMTs. Red beans and rice and other items were on the menu. During the event, the lodge handed out more than 200 Tommy Moose stuffed toys. Officers and firefighters will give them to children in crisis situations. The Tommy Moose is for like if you they come across an accident where a child is distressed or whatever, it's always nice to have something to comfort them by and that's what these are for. We show up to a lot of traumatic events on people's worst day they're calling us and anything to brighten that a little bit always helps. This was the fourth year for the luncheon and Tommy Moose toy distribution. Dozens of children in the Pine Belt spent their morning at the library in Hattiesburg. They were taking part in a fun event with a focus on science, technology, engineering and math. It was all a part of a Community Literacy Day hosted by the United Way of Southeast Mississippi. Several special guests read to the children, and they were, there were lots of STEM activities. Each child also took home a free book. We got to make a kind of Play-Doh, and it was really fun to do that. How to make airplanes, how to make parachutes, how to make all this stuff. This place is cool. I got to play with the bubbles outside. I was super excited, and I loved this event. I learned how to build a plane, how to make parachutes, and a bunch of other stuff. The event was co-hosted by Hattiesburg Parks and Recreation, the Hattiesburg Early Learning Collaborative, and Hattiesburg XL by 5. Coming up at 10, from the graduation stage to the shipyard, dozens of Ingalls shipbuilding apprentices entered the workforce straight ahead. Plus, eliminating the 6% commission on home buying and selling. How realtors say a new change could make the housing market more competitive after the break. <laughs> 